Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Alright guys, welcome to episode number 28 of War Room. I am glad to be here. I am sorry we are late, but that is completely my fault. I can't even pin it off on Siri this time. So, without further ado, number 28. We've got clan mechs, and we're here to talk about them. Uh, we've got a few basic points that we're going to go over in terms of uh, the, the most important things we felt uh, about the clan mechs coming out, and the balance, everything that comes with them. But before we get to that, let's go around and introduce everybody we have here. I am keeping Nico up past his bedtime once again, but that's okay. So, starting with Siri, as always. I'm Siri Thrax from SJR, the co-host of the show, and the person everybody blames for everything, even when it's not my fault. And then, hidden, because he refused the image I gave him, we have uh, Sir Wispsy, or Lord, I suppose, is more appropriate. Probably, yep. Hi, I'm Wispsy. Uh, I pilot Light Max. For Lords. And then in the top right with the green screen that I just can't make go away. We have Jaeger. Hi, I'm Jaeger. I'm Steel Jaguar. So the resolution on Skype is just too bad. And then joining us again, we have Nico. How's it going, man? Hi there. Pretty good. How about yourselves? Pretty good. And last but certainly not least, we have Mr. Bill. Hey everybody, I'm Homeless Bill of QQ Marks, moderator over at Outreach, and Notorious Shit Poster. Pretty good sum up, fair enough. Okay, so I actually have a couple things to fix up on the overlay, so I'm going to throw Siri under the bus and make him give you guys a sort of outline of what's going on tonight. Well... Basically, we are discussing everything clans. Balance, what ones are good, how it's affecting the metagame. Not much else to say other than that. Uh, depends where we want to start. Uh, I suppose the easiest one would be, be to decide which mechs have actually succeeded and why they're good. And also, which ones are kind of bad. So anybody have any ones you want to throw under the bus right away? Better. Adder. So bad, Adder. Yeah, for sure. For good. Low mounts, no ECM. Well, and so yeah, it, I'm back now. I have fixed the uh, the thing I needed to fix. The thing I thought we could do is there are a few mechs that I think everybody agrees are very very powerful, and then there are a few mechs that I think everybody agrees are underpowered, as as there are in uh, the inner sphere. But I think what I wanted to do is just go through and talk about why certain mechs were better than others, what uh, they bring to the table, and stuff like that. So we can actually just go through the line uh, and just start at the bottom and get to the top, I guess, if that's okay with everybody. Sure, we can do that way. Silence reigns! My favorite. Um, okay, so starting with the Kit Fox, how do you guys actually feel about the Kit Fox? I know Wispsy, I know you play Lights a lot, and so does Siri, so do you guys have much to weigh in about, about the Kit Fox? 130 kilometers per hour or bust? Pretty much, yes. So it's got ECM, which is nice, but it, it's just too slow for that amount of armor. So you don't think that it makes up for it with uh, the, all the utility it brings? Stuff like uh, ECM, triple AMS? Like... I actually kind of want to go on my stream and get all the clips of uh, adders and kit foxes dying terribly just because they are so slow you cannot miss them. <laughs> well, so, I mean, yeah. how, how fast does a, a mastered kit fox go? 
106. It runs about the same as a medium mech. It's yeah. barely slower than, or it's barely faster than a Timberwolf. Yeah, so like, yeah. Kit Fox, the, the, the only build I've had success with at all on the Kit Fox is running the the triple AMS ECM ERPPC, because then you just sit in the back and support your team. But you don't, you don't you're not very effective. You're just uh, pretty good at preventing your team from getting hit by LRMs, which is useful, but eh. It is very useful, and sure, between the three AMS and the ECM, it probably does bring the most utility for supporting a team that any light mech would, but it can't perform traditional intersphere light mech roles like tapping, harassing enemies that are caught out, or even trying to fight in a light v light fight. It's It can't perform any of those traditional roles, and that's what really holds it back. The speed is a huge detriment that it can't overcome. The ECM is nice, the 3 AMS is nice, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. And I think that... I mean, sorry, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, in, in like normal pub games and stuff, you do see an awful lot of LRMs, and you can just sit back and support your team, and you'll help them out an awful lot. They won't get killed. But in, say, a more competitive setting, uh, the moment that you come anywhere near out, you're just going to get shot and put your team down. I think that if if you're playing like a really high restrictions match, like something in Merrick's Civil War where you don't have, if like everything but lock-ons is restricted and you don't have ECM and stuff like that, things like the Kit Fox might be a good idea because they would free up your higher tonnages for before it's been, you know, Jesters or Atlas Ks have been your, your AMS boats to stop LRM comps. But I think you might be able to pitch something like that with a Kit Fox and save that tonnage. But then you're then you're transferring your whole comp to something that's really slow, and you have to be very methodical about your pushes, so... I, I don't know. I've also had some success running SRM builds, but, you know, like everybody else has said, it's pub games that you can do that kind of crap. You know, you wouldn't even think about bringing it to any sort of competitive match, so... You know, it's like, it's like the awesome or any other subpar mech like you can make it work it can do things and you know it packs quite a punch if you put srms on it but at the end of the day it is the speed that just kills it yeah. i actually feel more in pain trying to get a kit fox into a fight than when i'm getting a dire whale into a fight because when the whale actually arrives it wrecks things the kit fox spends like forever in terms like light terms running to the fight and then when it gets there, it barely can do anything in the first place. Yep. Um, also, and the other thing is, is, we haven't actually seen clan mechs used in a competitive situation other than those few 12v12s that we did, because no league is currently allowing them. Is that right? I know Merrick has got one more turn left before they close out, and then I think they'll be available next season, but they're not available this season. Does the, does the Invitational allow clan mechs? Do you guys know? It does not. Okay. Yeah, so... And... Is the next season of Arhad? It will not, okay. only when they're available for sea bills. Okay, so that has been the case. So it's actually going to be a long time before we see clan mechs in competitive play. But and a longer time blast. still, unless the kit box and adder are buffed, until we see those used. So, I mean, like, I've I, seen... I don't mean to be overly pessimistic, but there is a strong correlation, like not direct, but a strong correlation between what's good in pugs and what's good in comp. Uh, and if it can't ever work in a pug, then it's not, it's probably not going to ever work in comp. So, the thing is, is I think you could build like oh. a, a new kind of deck around it, is what I'm saying, though. Is I think that. With clan mechs, if you're forced to be, if you're running clan mechs versus IS mechs, if you're doing something like that, uh, which it, it balancing clan mechs in that way because of like the weakness of their light mechs is a start. Like clans versus IS becomes a completely different game when you have to run light mechs and therefore you're down that mobility. Because we've, we, I mean, we've talked about a hundred times how important mobility is. So I think that you might see like clan comps lean towards very slow, heavy hitting like turtles that just kind of lumber around the map taking shots and you can't expose yourself to them because you will get destroyed whereas you'll see IS mechs being fast and quick and trying to pick off mechs 
I see a clan only drop deck being extremely weak in like conquest mode. When we were doing the twelve v twelve show matches for clans versus inner sphere, we noticed that we couldn't send our light mechs out to do anything because they were too slow to get back. They'd probably just get caught out and killed. And we couldn't go anywhere ourselves very quickly because if we did, the dire wolves were too slow to catch up. They <laughs> way, way too slow. So in a conquest situation, you you want to move out and take those points. Your lights can't do that because they could get stuck out there and isolated. They can't get back to your force in time like inner sphere lights can. And the dire wolves, unless you take Masakaris, which is probably a more viable competitive mech because the dire wolf is so slow, the dire wolf is just going to get left behind. It can get picked off by lights even because it's torso twist and it's it's just so slow. Of course, once the dire wolf gets to the fight, it obliterates everything it sees. But that's we need more mobility for most of these game modes. See, I was maybe thinking of going like the other way because the mediums and the heavies are really mobile and really good mechs. Like, so I mean, the Stormcrow runs right? yeah, yeah. the same speed as the lights. It's got more hard points, more tonnage, more armor, everything. And then the Timberwolf is just a really good mech. So, I mean, even the Summoner has some some nice pluses about it, although it's kind of awkward with all the jump jets. So yeah, I can see them running a lot more mediums and heavies, and then maybe having a few backup like direwolves that they don't really leave too far to bring behind if the weight allows, things like that. And the Massacre, like, just, just because it's 20 kph faster than the direwolf, is probably more likely to get used in that kind of situation. Also, like we know, going to up to 100 tons, especially when your deck is being built about uh, an exact tonnage, around an exact tonnage, sticking an atlas in there is you know, it's rough. You can't always afford to do that. But an 85 ton is much more affordable. And then if you don't need to bring any assaults or lights because there's no restrictions on what can bring, we are probably more likely to see summoners and timberwolves be the max tonnage max that a deck will bring. Sorry, I was just checking yeah. out a couple of... Uh... I mean, we, yeah, we, we don't have to go through mech by mech. So you don't think that... You think that you'll see clan mechs try and conform to the the playstyle of Inner Sphere? You don't think you'll see them make use of the firepower they have in a new way? In a game mode like Assault or Skirmish, they could. You just savagely death ball and go find some place good to camp. But any kind of movement puts clans at a disadvantage because of how slow the dire wolf is. If you need to bring a dire wolf, that is. And their lights can't really go out on their own either. So Clans will probably be better at a death ball than Inner Sphere, just because of their weapons technology is quite a bit stronger than Inner Sphere. Yeah, the lights are loose uh, against the Inner Sphere lights like every single time without conquest. E e contest. Even if they load up, up on streaks, it's just not enough. I think the whale is. It is too slow. You can make it work in pugs because pugs don't have communications and scouting. And you get ninja dire whales that sneak up on people. But if good luck trying to get, make that work against, like, even IS Dragon Slayer meta against Timberwolf 89.1, Summoner 89.1, that's it, it's never going to get in range. And there will be certain positions on certain maps that maybe, like, the Gauss Sniper would be able to hold down. But it would be very, very specific applications. And I, that's I, assuming I, there are no strikes. I'm gonna... I would like to try it, honestly. Like, I would like to... I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I think you can see some very different strategies with the clans. And I think that it'll be a while before we do, because people have to... I mean, you have to get a master, you have to play with them a long time. It took a while for the current meta that exists to emerge, and even that's been shifting. So I think that you might see, especially, well, I'm trying to think the, like, the difference between, it depends on how it's done, because if it's clans versus clans or clans versus IS, that's different than if it's mixed matches. I think mixed matches are where you present a whole heap of balancing problems. Right, in a non-mixed match, though, the medium and heavy mechs that the clans have are very fast and very mobile. All of jump jets except the storm crow, so they will be able to out, you know, uh, agility and movements like on a circle race or something against an inner sphere group that has to bring uh, that would be bringing like victors and things. That extra 10 kph does make a huge difference for the medium and heavy mechs. Oh, I agree. 
And I mean, the Nova is just a huge beast. Like, holy god. I mean, it's, it's squishy. Nova is a lethal max. It's just those 12 small lasers. Oh, man. So much, so much fun. Yeah, Nico, what's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite clan mech? Well, I had a bit of fun with the Party Nova earlier today, but uh, I'm I'm one of those fanboys who just I, I drool and obsess yes, over the Timberwolf. God, who timed out? My laptop. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. You have okay. Great. I yeah, history. I see that iconic design, and I just melt. Yeah, I can understand that. I have had such a blast. The the Direwolf has been my favorite mech of all times, but uh what do you guys think about the the two medium mechs, the the Ryo the Ryokin and the Nova? I mean obviously the Nova is uh I think they're good mechs. Yeah the Nova is good. I, I haven't actually, actually played the Ryokin. Mech without jump chance. It seems to offer quite a lot. Really? It doesn't have jump chance. Looking at it hands down, I thought it was going to be one of the bad ones. It's actually in the notes as one of the ones that I was like, I don't think this mech is very viable. But don't don't talk about the hands. Don't talk about Just the hands. hands. Jazz hands. No, the so Ryokin is just a, a straight upgrade over a Kentaro. Think of a Kentaro, and the Ryokin is just a better Kentaro in every way. It's got a more survivable XL engine. It can take ballistics if it wants and just as many missiles. It's just like a, a way better Kentaro, so use it in that fashion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the pod space that. makes up for the lack of jump jets. I mean, it can fit more than a summoner, can it? Yeah, I quite so, like Yeah, it's brutal. If you're going to bring a Sent A, you bring the Stormcrow for the additional firepower. Basically. But it is no small, uh, 12 small laser Nova. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing about the Nova, is that small lasers right now, in my opinion, are just broken. 5 damage for 2 heat, and their range is usable, unlike the IS small. Uh, 180 meters, if you're brawling, is actually pretty decent. It's not the 270 of the medium, but it doesn't make it a write-off. And 12 smalls, you can actually alpha that uh, on the Nova, and it's only 75% heat, I think. And that's 60 damage in one second. Wow. Yeah, plus yeah the... the damage is pretty insane. I mean, the the range I like because I actually would use them. Like, I would never use IS Smalls because they're, they're just too close in. But with the damage, they're pretty brutal. And the thing is Since that 75%, ghost. if you're ghost heating, if it's you're firing it properly, 6 and 6, it's like 35% for the alpha. First, uh... First game I played, I dropped in a Warhawk, and I was like, I'll, I'll alpha strike, see what happens, and I just died. <laughs> like two minutes later? Yeah, basically. Oh, First game I played in a clan mech was actually that show match. I jumped in the Nova, Terra Therma, and still got um, second highest damage just running around shooting small lasers. Well done. Yeah, it doesn't matter on the map, the, the Nova will do amazing if you can get in close. You, even on Terra Therma, if you fire them correctly six at a time, you can do sustained damage for, I don't know, like 30 seconds probably before you even have to think about doing your heat or worrying about your heat. And then the machine guns are there while you're cooling down. Yeah. And weapon balance is a whole other part, and we can we can skip around if we want to because it's a good conversation. I don't... There's so much to talk about with weapon balance, too. Um, I keep talking about mechs, we're talking about weapon balance. Well, if, if I want to just push a question in there for you guys, and I know it's not directly about balance, but That's like, fine. what's what's your, how do you feel in the max, like just in general? IS max have a very hard time competing. The ones that were the best, like the Dragon Slayer, they're still good, they can hold their own, but the non-optimized max are even against non-optimized clans, just simply outclassed. You guys have seen the, uh, you guys have seen Pacific Rim, right? You know that really cheesy as hell <laughs> intro sequence where he's like, there are things you can't fight against. Act of, acts of God, it's a hurricane. But when you're in a Jaeger, you can fight the hurricane. 
That's how clan mechs are. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, that, they do feel good. Description. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, I do feel that Embers and Jenners are still good, though. I mean, you could get one shot before anyway, so not much has really changed. And I would not put the Dragon Slayer out of the picture at all. I think the Dragon Slayer and, uh, in, is it still a very, very good mech. I, I've i tried jump sniping with the Timberwolf, and for some reason I just don't like it. And I'm not sure why. It might just be that I don't have it mastered yet, and I'm just uncomfortable in it. But the, the profile feels weird. The torso twisting in midair earns you a lot of extra fire, whereas like torso twisting in something like the Victor earns you much less hits. Like if you torso twist, you're gonna you're gonna be missed. Whereas if you torso twist in midair with a Mad Cat, you're gonna get hit because you become you're, you're still the same size. That nose sticks out. Yeah, like Siri said, like the top IS mechs are fine. You know, they'll they'll make it. But anything that was bad before is really kind of hurting now, unless SRMs, you know, sort of saved it. But it is. Clans do feel appropriately powerful. It's just a matter of, you know, trying to save some of those IS mechs that are just going to crap because of it. The IS mediums with SRMs are doing very well. I've seen them out there all week so far, and they are tearing it up. Like I'm talking about the 55-ton mechs with jump jets. And that's what we've been waiting for, this SRM fix the whole time, to come and uh, make the those brawling mediums do viable and do great work, and they do, in the pugs anyways. Haven't seen them in 12s yet, but I'm glad that that's all been fixed up. I wish I could. So I wish I could say that I had a... got buffed because of the SRM hit reg being more stable. I wish I could say that I had a video for you of the SWK match, but we had to switch the restrictions because of the, the, the hit scan stuff. But yeah, we were running, in practice at least, we were running two large laser, three SRM, six victors, because the ballistics were off the table. And they were still putting out a ton of work, and like it was all rush brawling. Uh, Bill, were you in any of those games that we played against you guys? Would have been last night. Guess not. Um. Oh wait, did I turn my sound off? No, we hear you. Okay, I, I had to make no. I, the, so there's a little thing on my here, and it slipped in between my shorts and my chair, and it turns my like my headphones off, and I wasn't sure if I just couldn't hear him responding. But yeah, so we, we did a few scrims last night, and SRMs definitely work. Like, they're definitely to the point now where I feel like they're a viable weapon. I'd feel much more comfortable um, going in with a brawling setup now. I'm confident that uh, it's going to be more likely a win than a little bit of a 50-50 of do we get a terrible position. You can actually push on people a bit, you know, because you've got the damage once you get there. Yeah. Definitely on the test server, I was ripping stuff up with a sent A. I mean, it was refreshing to like be able to kill just about anything when you hit them. Damage didn't just disappear. Oh god, I haven't seen a sent in so long. I know, right? I was so happy to bring that thing out. I would have won the match if I hadn't run out of ammo. It was <laughs> one of those kind, and it's just been too long since that was possible. Yeah. Oh god, back on track. Clan Max, guys. Um, Ryokin's pretty viable, Nova's pretty viable, uh, what do we think about the heavies? I think those are clearly the, the two clan mechs that are, uh, the best, most viable, I would say. Uh, Nova's pretty fantastic. That's true, <laughs> Nova is really yeah. fantastic. The, the Timberwolf does it all, really. Besides, like, mass energy boating, it really does it all. It it's, can do LRMs at 89.1 kph still. It can brawl fantastically and snipe, of course. Gauss and 2 ERPPCs. It, it really does it all. I've always had this fantasy, uh, once Clan Mechs came out, that you could build, like, a fast comp where all you do is, like, slowly circle around your component or your opponent, just, like, running rings around them in a bunch of Timberwolves with Lerms. So you're constantly just bombarding them with Lerms as you circle around and they can't get shots on you. And then when you run out of ammo, you just brawl them because you're still in a Timberwolf and you can still fit, you know, four ER Smalls and a UAC-10. So, it, it, it's such a fun mech. That... The, the most fun games I've had so far have been in a, a Timberwolf, and I think that they have very viable builds. It just gets the firing line so quickly. Uh, yeah. And then, that mobility is just, like, really, really nice. So, Jaeger, have you been running mostly uh, traditional jump sniping builds with it, or have you been trying different stuff? 
It's been about half and half between my time on the test server and since Clanx came out. I've done a fair amount of brawling in them. I've really been enjoying the SRMs on them. Just I, I'm still firing all four, you know, SRM sixes together. It produces a little extra heat, but it's fine. Uh, and then the the sniping, of course, two ARPBCs is super hot. But once you get it under control, you're looking pretty good. You can pretty much kite any dragon slayer or whatever as well. Like if you're in a one on one situation. You can just out kite the Dragon Slayer and use your ERs and Gauss to just put it down. It's got it's pretty much no competition at that point. And so this is interesting to me because before before we actually had the mechs in our hands and knew what was going on, I think a lot of people expected the summoner to be the main effective heavy, just because everybody knew they were like, okay, we can put put a gauze rifle on it, we can put a PPC an ER PPC on it, jump sniper, there we go. But it seems like a lot of people have come to favor the, the Mad Cat instead, and what do you guys, uh, have you noticed anything that that is attributed to, or? The fact, well, it's really it quite simple. The TAC S, the fact yeah. that they included the TAC S. When we thought, when we didn't know that there was going to be the S variant in there that would give us jump jets, everybody was kind of expecting the Timberwolf to be like a okay heavy mech, more on the, like the arrival of the Orion, we were like, oh, it can brawl, it can do this, and then, uh, but they gave it jump jets. And that is huge. So the moment we heard that they was going to have jump jets, it was pretty clear that it was going to be better than the summoner in most ways. Because it can do the summoner build with even more heat sinks if it wants, or it can take that extra, you know, 15 damage PPC. So it's really all about the S. Not being locked into all five jump jets is huge because, I mean, as much as it's kind of nice for mobility, it's like, I wouldn't waste those four extra tons on the summoner if I didn't have to. I'd jam some more weapons or heat sinks in there. Um, I mean, the quirks and the hard points on on the react um, I have a summoner are really good, but uh, it's just not as much damage, and those locked in jump jets really do, yeah, as you said. And that's something I want to talk about quick before we move on to uh, the assault max. Is how do you guys feel? I think that personally, the the quirk system with Omnipods was a brilliant way to sort of balance out clans. I think that it provides uh, like a way to balance good components because obviously everybody's going to use that S torso but I think they could be even more severe like I think the 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 experience bonus that you get for all eight comp or all eight omnipods should be like a performance bonus like if you're running all eight omnipods you should be running or maybe not a performance bonus but you're running at standard where if you're running seven out of eight you get a severe detriment because I think that that would temper things like jump jets and stuff like that because time and time again what kind of there is, what uh, kind of detriment are you thinking of though honestly i haven't been able to come up with it yet because this is the problem that we've always faced is jump jets are hands de like there is no detriment to taking jump jets and hopefully the fall damage fix adds a little bit to that and maybe the heat will as well but until that happens jump jets are just always going to be better than not having jump jets. Like that one ton, two ton, well, like however many tons it is, is just always going to be better. That's just the way Battletech is though. Even the tabletop and stuff, mech with yeah. jump jets is just better than a mech without jump jets. It's, it's kind of inherent and in, you know, it's how the game works. No, I, I, even, I, if, even if the penalties are severe, then you may not continue using them as the dominant like Pop-Tart style. But given the choice between two otherwise reasonably competing mechs, you'll take the one that has just a single jump jet, because what if you get canyon? Or yeah. something like that. It, that utility alone is worth taking jump jets. My, the only thing I've ever been able to come up with, and it would just be a giant pain in the ass, and I'm not even sure I like it, is that jump jets would be a fixed burst. So you hit, you hit your jump jet key, you jump up, and you have a fixed burst, and it takes you X number of meters into the air in a certain trajectory that doesn't change, and that's your jump jet. And then you land, and you have a cooldown on that, so you still be able to use it for things like maneuverability and climbing ridges and things like that. But you're not able to abuse it uh, running away in terms of like jump jet spam or stuff like that. And it takes away from the. It just add, it, it makes it not perfect, if you know what I mean. But I'm not even sure if I like that, because it's such a fixed... Then it becomes such a fixed tool. Doing it in combat would be suicide, for sure, if it was that. 
I, like I said, that's not a very well thought out idea. It's just the only thing that I've ever been able to come up with that would make jump jets. Uh... Hey, an idea is an idea. Yeah, I, I I mean, I don't know. That's if you're trying to balance jump jet mechs with non-jump jet mechs, so. Jumping back a topic, though, do you think the Mad Cat should have gone in jump jets, or should they have just stricken that variant uh, from being released? Me, myself? I think it's... No, just in general for people. <laughs> Nico's like, uh... I personally like it. I mean, I think it's cool, but for balance, it's awkward. It's like the summoner's supposed to be like that jump jetting heavy, and you know, it's sort of drawback is, hey, you don't have very much pod space, both because we didn't put Endo in for some stupid reason, and more because it's got those four tons locked of jump jets, and it's like the Timberwolf can just do it better, and it's got more hard points, and it's got more tonnage. It's really hard uh, for me to say that, I mean, I like that we've got a jumping version, but for balance, not so much. Yeah, because I was comfortable with the potential power of the summoner and what it could bring with those limitations, and... The Mad Cat steps beyond that into the realm of just being slightly too good for me to be comfortable with it. Correct me if I'm wrong. It does everything. There, there isn't... So the jump jet scaling that we have for the Highlander isn't in place for everything else, right? It is the only mech that has that behavior and the only one that was uh, like nerfed in that manner. Okay. And that's why I wanted everything else to act yeah. like it. Nico, where trust. is where is that requested features list? Add add jump jet scaling to it. We'll all go vote. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I think that not, but honestly, I do think that would help. I think that if we get jump jet scaling for all mechs, including like lights, should be the most renewable, and then mediums, and then heavies, and then assaults, and jump jet scaling is a way to do that. Like when when it happened to the Highlander, the first like week or so, User everybody in your was channel like, timed out. Oh no, who'd we lose? Nico. No. He doesn't want to scare him off. Shit. It's my fault. He might have had to go, which is okay. Um. No, his connection was lost. Oh yeah, that's keep true. going. I'll watch out for him to come back. Uh all I was gonna say was, like, for even for the first week or so, people were like, "No, the Highlander's still totally viable." But when was the last time you guys saw a Highlander in a comp game? Just doesn't, like, it just doesn't happen anymore, because it, it, it was a less viable option than the victor. And so if you put everything on that scale, where they do become less maneuverable as they go down, to the point where assault mechs are kind of clunky when they're jump jetting like they should be, I think that would be a step in the right direction. And that Especially that initial goal. hop. Like, that initial hop of the victor can just you can really bunny hop with that thing and avoid a lot of damage that way and the highlander can do the same thing until they nerf the initial jump i i did like that change more than anything else oh god speaking of bunny hops have you seen the mad cat bunny hop i have not it jumps it, it sure does hop that's for sure it teleports up and then magnetically clamps back down oh god yeah, the initial jump on, I mean, lights, I'm okay with bunny hopping, you know, lights don't need any any uh, more problems, but um, but anything above a medium, I really don't like that initial hop, it really makes it sketchy, hit registration, it, eh, I don't like it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do about that, so... User was moved to your channel. Ah, he's back. Mobile hyperpulse engaged. Do you have to get going soon, man? I know that you. I know that you just crashed out, but I know that you're on a, a time limit tonight as well. Uh, I can stick around for another fifteen minutes. Okay, great. Just since we started late. I apologize for that. That is completely my fault. You just missed us discussing how the bunny hop on Mad Cat is currently broken as shit. Yeah, you were asking me a question just as I dropped. What was that? Um, who remembers? I forgot. Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Uh, 
put it on the feature list, jump jet scaling a la Highlander all the way down. I believe was it. Yes, that was it. Ah. Sorry, I'm uh, fussing with the overlay. Talk. All right, we've covered basically Mad Cat versus Summoner. Is there any hope for the Summoner in the current environment? Uh, in tonnage restrictions, you might see it. Maybe. Still it, a good mech. Yeah, it's, just mean, it's definitely not as bad. Fun play. I think it might it might prove to be well. The Timberwolf is still such a good brawler. It does have a much smaller profile than the Timberwolf. In my opinion, it's still got it's got the barrel chest. But other than that, it's the arms more slender. It's just a smaller profile. It's got high number of though as well. So I mean, if you, you I mean, you can maybe stretch taking one to make up tonnages. I feel like it's so a lot easier. It is a lot easier to hit the Mad Cat. All right, but that's it, it not enough. Be... It wouldn't be taken just because the Timberwolf is better, not because it's bad. It, it's a very good mech. And if the Timberwolf didn't have jump jets, it would be the best clan mech. So, Jaeger, how would be... you stack up the Summoner versus the uh, Cataphract? The Summoner is way faster with a more survivable XL engine. Gets about the same alpha strike in. It's only 25 with a 5 split. But they... I'd say the summoner is probably because of the maneuverability better than the cataphract. Now it can't do some of the silly builds that the cataphract can do, like two gals PPC and such, but because its engine is huge, but it, I'd say that the summoner is better than the cataphract. Yeah, summoner. Those hard. jump jets, you can jump so high, and I don't know how much of a detriment it's going to be once you know the heat and uh, fall damage goes in for jump jets, but it's. For right now, you can pretty much fight from the beginning of a game to the end of the game with the Gauss and DR PPC. You can jump at the beginning, shoot enemies, and just throughout the entire thing, once your jump jets are good, you jump to maximum height, shoot something, and you're down from start to finish. The Timberwolf can't do that because it can't pack as many jump jets. You, well, that, you could if you did a, only one Gauss or PPC on. That kind of puts it in perspective, though. You're saying that the Summoner is better than the Cataphract, but it is overshadowed by the Mad Cat. Right. So. Cataphract yep. is hands down best IS heavy. Oh yeah, and always has I'm been kidding, since it's it came the out. dragon, dude. <laughs> My dragon is amazing. Yeah, I have to admit that. I did learn to fear that two PPC dragon long, long ago. Hey, it killed Addy. <laughs> it killed Addy. It must be good. That's how weapons work, right? If you get killed by it, it's OP. It's good puff, because it's magic. In any case. I've anything else on the heavies? No. Oh, go ahead. Since, uh, you know, bounce for of clan versus IS was the best concern of a lot of people, where do you guys stand on how we did it? Honestly, it's a lot than... better than I thought. Well, so yeah, yeah. Jaeger and... It's better than any of the other MechWarrior games and Tabletop, if that's what you're going for. You got that. Jaeger and Whiskey, but you guys played in those show matches. Uh, how did you guys feel? I felt that, I already said this earlier, the Dire Wolves and Lights were a severe disadvantage to our deck. The Inner Sphere was far more mobile with the, than us because they had Dragon Slayers, Cataphracts, and Shadowhawks, which are all pretty quick. And then, of sure. course, the Light Mechs way quicker. So... We we had to like kind of just sit in a location and kind of camp out until we saw openings because we couldn't move with the direwolves. We couldn't send our lights out to do anything. The lights had to stay with us because if they went out too far, they could get picked off by the inner sphere lights. So unless we're doing a you know tonnage drop where we get to choose and we'll only bring the mediums and heavies, the inner sphere is way faster than the the clan mech. So. If, when Community Warfare comes out, the last I heard, the plan was it's going to be Clans versus Inner Sphere, and if the restrictions like 3333 are in, the Inner Sphere will have a huge mobility advantage over the Clans. So the Inner Sphere is better in that regard, if the drop uh, restrictions are correct. Yeah, but I must say that once I actually got in there, in my Nova, I felt pretty strong. Oh yeah, the, the mediums and heavies are great. It was the the assaults and lights were holding us back, really. 
They really do. The assaults and lights are just, uh, like, that slowness is just such a massive weakness. I feel like there are, overall, the balance is decent, but there are a few configurations that are breaking the comparison. Such as? What? Two we've discussed, the Nova, the Sniper Mad Cat, and the third one would be the 50-point Daishi. The Cheese Wolf is so, so overpowered. For anybody who's unfamiliar with it, could somebody give a rundown on what exactly the Hang Cheese Wolf- Hang on, I have wolf... got a video, a seven second video, where me and this other guy evaporate like a fresh Warhawk in two shots. I, uh... There it is. I got in a situation where I was stuck on- I was stuck near Theta and my Dire Wolf. My team, like my, my three teammates left me and I was shouting at them in TS, I was like, what the hell are you guys doing? Leave me all alone. And then I just like go quiet for about a minute. And then you just you just hear my war horn go. Then you hear my war horn go again. And again. And I got six kills standing by myself on Theta in a dire wolf. I was like, Never mind. I'm okay. You guys can run away. It's fine. I have two gauze rifles and two RPPCs. That mech is so good. I, like... Siri, you built the 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 four UX ten one with the the six ear smalls, and like that's great. It's fun in a brawl, but nothing for me will like that. It, you just no, destroy like, people. The UX ten is hard to use, and when you're using it, it's not like it's overbearing. Yeah. The the clan auto cannons I thought were really intelligently done in that the IS still has better auto cannons because they're front loaded, whereas these ones are harder to put all the damage on target. Like when I was running two UI twenties and two LBX twenties just for shits and giggles and that thing, um, it still didn't, you know, pour people out nearly as fast as the fifty right on target with the two Gauss and two ERs. It just spreads too much and so because those are the front-loaded weapons, and you can put them all together with manageable heat. Uh, it's just ridiculous. It's actually good heat. I think it's like 20 heat sinks. Yeah, you can- no, it's like 24 heat sinks or some stupid shit like that. Like, it's incredible heat efficiency for the amount of damage you're putting out. And again, its speed does make it, like, it has limited viability in, uh... Comp drops, but, but it still... ruins pub games. Oh god, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. I love you can it. kill them in pub games. You can kill them off the back of formations constantly. Like if you go straight for the enemy's tail where you know it's going to be, you're usually going to find a dire wolf there, and that dire wolf's going to die horribly. Yeah. Like every yeah. single pub game, if you're in a timber wolf or whatever, you're going fast. Caustic. You man. will you will find a dire wolf there, and it will die. If you spawn, so... if you're an alpha lance on caustic and a dire wolf, you're just done. Like at the same time though, um, I I was playing with uh, like Caf and Proton, and they were in their sniper direwolves, and people found them, and the other people just died straight away. Like, there was no kills to be had anywhere right from the start. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about like one unsupported direwolf, but yeah, a couple of them together could take down a lance together certainly. Yeah, and it's the confusing bit to me is that we were comfortably at 30 alpha. And we called that, like, 30, give or take. Catfracks even were pushed to about 25 when we did the fast build. When, because we had to go fast to avoid strikes. But 30, 35 alpha, all good. 40 if you're going to be a completely glass cannon brawler. Along comes Daishi, says 50, no problem. Screw you, Ghost Heat, we're, we're, we're done. And the yeah. really be outmaneuvered there. Really badly. It's true, but it only needs to put three or two shots on you, and that's it. If if that direwolf pilot can aim, you're dead. You know, I mean. Yeah, sure. you need a lot of focus fire. It, it's Maybe. just like it's just like a team. It's like a lance of lerms and a spotter in a pug game. They just ruin it for the other team. It's you know they the other team never really had much of a chance if you can get in position with one of those direwolves. I mean, again, the speed's a drawback, but. Not in pug games. I don't think it's like quite as game ruining as it sounds. Like it's pretty rough, but you can you can beat them. Like they're not indestructible. You've got to be able to. Oh aim. yeah, you can beat them really well. Else you get completely uh, fucked. 
once they get to the fight, they do terrible, terrible things to the enemy team. But you have a couple options. If you see a dire wolf is, you know, lagging behind, you can go kill that dire wolf, or you can immediately engage the enemy team before the dire wolves even get to the fight, wipe out or mostly wipe out their team, and then the dire wolves are like, oh shit, I wish I was here 30 seconds ago, but I'm too slow. So I mean, those are the same. Speed really holds it back. But those it are the is same problems. Once it gets to the fight. Those are the same problems encountered by all the other dire wolves, and I've tried several different loadouts on dire wolves and they feel okay because of the burst because of the other drawbacks to clan weapons they feel reasonable it's when i'm playing the cheese whale as we're calling it that it just becomes to me easy mode the range is just such a massive thing as well because, I mean, I remember one game, we were on Alpine, and Calf and Proton just sat on the, um, like, they, the enemy team had Iron Hill, they got there first and everything, they had the whole side. It was a horrible situation. So they went up to the other side of the upper base and just pushed them off the hill with the range. There was nothing they could really do back. <laughs> Our team got a free walk up all the way to Iron Iron Hill, which makes uh, life a lot easier. <laughs> Yeah, all the other builds are functional. It was like running three UI twos, three UI fives, and a bunch of smalls. It was really fun. You know, it's got just so much you can do with it. But there's that one build that you build if you want to win, and that's that's the two ER PPC and two Gauss. It was just unmistakably better than everything else because it's you can put it all on one side. It all goes to one place. It's super long range. It's super heat efficient. It's 50 damage to one component in one click with minimal exposure. I mean, that, you just can't beat that. And 10 damage to the adjacent components in case you miss. Yeah, just in case. <laughs> Never forget that can you can do it at point blank range as well. So if you get oh, yeah. in space, even a light mech, the light mech can go away in a single shot. My at point blank range. My you had a couple of mediums get close. My favorite kill on a dire wolf so far has just been a kit box ran up to me, got legged, and then tried to like jump jet to escape, and I just slow panned my arms up. It was like, poof, just dies. They're so much fun. Okay, well, what do you guys think could be done about that? Because obviously, like the the ACs have been handled well. You can't put four gauze rifles on it. You can't put like too many ER PPCs. But clearly, that's I mean, gauze rifles and PPCs have being put together has a thing that we've been dealing with for a long time, and it was sort of fixed by the charge up mechanic on jump snipers because it became harder to time when you're using your gauze rifle. People are starting to get used to that and play around it and have been for a while. But um, it doesn't seem to be a thing with the direwolf. So, like, what do you guys think can be done? I want to see the heat scale done in a more intelligent way. More effectively, every weapon is put on the same scale, and they all have an associated alpha penalty, or whatever you want to call it, so that it's more about we're actually limiting alphas or pinpoint damage instead of like well we're gonna make sure you can't fire three gauss at one time okay we're gonna make sure you can't fire three ppcs at the same time we're gonna make sure you can't fire two auto cannon 20s at the same time it's like there's so many ballistics to dance around this penalty with i wish they'd just slap it all on well, the same scale and do it i think that the only thing that's a problem is gauss so i think everybody i think everything else is okay when when you say slap it all on the same scale, you mean like fire four or five weapons, no matter which kind of... No, 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 no. It'd be definitely on a per weapon basis. You know, like medium lasers, for instance, you would be able to fire six or eight of. And gauss, you would be able to fire two of. Three PPCs, whatever. Pick 30 pinpoint damage, and of course you would have to adjust that for weapon spread, you know, like SRNs, you could fire you know, 40 or 45 damage worth without a penalty, whatever you want to set it at, but I just think that they all need to be tied in, or it's just going to be what it has been, where competitive players just dance around the penalty um, by picking different weapons that aren't getting hit. I think the way they're linking them now is just arbitrary and insane. My half-baked idea was um, that I remember in one book, uh, I think Vlad Ward or somebody who was shooting at Phelan Kell, and um, basically he was uh, firing his weapons all at him, and uh, the Gauss, the second Gauss, didn't go off at the same time because his computer couldn't quite deal with it. I think if they did something like that, where you can just only fire so many weapons and 
like the more powerful the weapon, like the longer duration you can't fire other weapons, things like that. And you could at it wouldn't let you alpha, and uh, you'd have to fire like stagger your fire more. Burst fire Gauss. That would just be silly. <laughs> I don't know what Jaeger's laughing no. at, but I hope it's that. It's, it's no, it's just weird to me that the Gauss is the only clan ballistic that is pinpoint. I would say make it a spread, cause then, but then it'd just be the hag, and we don't get that for a few more years yet. <laughs> Army of One's already on top of it. Um, or ghost, or ghost heat for Gauss. I mean, <laughs> really, really the... penal penalizing ghost heat, but the charge in the uh, the uh, the whatever it is, the explosion do make like they are quite a quite a big disadvantage to other ACs and like PPCs and stuff. But the problem is is that uh, gauze rifles are the only like they are they are direct ports over from IS uh, gauze rifles. Like they are exactly the same, basically. Whereas clan ACs are you know better in weight and damage basically because but they've been split up into shells and gauze rifles are just better. Like there isn't uh you could make the charge time long no couldn't do that. Charge making the charge time longer wouldn't help. Um, Gauss rifles are generally worse in IS though, so I think it kind of works out. Because I mean, like it, you can just, much. especially on the big slow max that they get put on as well. Like if you get just on one, like with machine guns or anything, you pop that Gauss like immediately, and that's all its weapons gone or half its weapons gone. Especially well, if they keep it in the arms, which a lot of devils do. But it's still the thing is really good, I mean, you can still run it on a Dragon Slayer, and it's still really good. Like... I like it as a weapon, I just think that the DPS from ACs is just a lot. Yeah. The thing is that this problem is only really a new problem, in the sense that there have been no IS assaults that can do dual gauss. If there had been an IS assault that could dual gauss, then we'd already be experiencing this. But currently, the IS is limited to, like, the Cataphract can do it, kinda. Yagermax can do it. Catapults can do it. Russ and if you're crazy, the, the hero... Podcast, we might get the Mauler for IS, and it will be able to do that. Oh, swag. Yeah, and I would be... UAC fives. Swag! I would be equally terrified of a bat. Oh, well, so, okay, so, I mean, we're getting a little bit off of what I originally want to talk about, which is how would you fix it? Like, I mean, obviously Bill mentioned putting it all on a, like, a collective heat scale, where if you have over a certain alpha and you fire it at once, you get a penalty. But, like, what would you guys, like, what are you, do you guys have ideas about how you would deal with it? It might be harsh. It definitely is harsh. But Wouldn't one Gauss charge at a time. It wasn't. Ooh. One Gauss charge at a time, or turn him into like a two or three shot burst. I would prefer I think one burst Gauss. Just doesn't make any sense at all for a Gauss rifle. Yeah, I think one. I think one Gauss charge at a time would be better than. Uh, or, or make. You could do something like, you require the the level 7 targeting module or something like that to compensate for two gauze rifles and to charge two at once you need to take up an extra seven tons of targeting computer. That would be amazing. That would be one way of doing it. An interesting way, yeah. But yeah. I think that would be a very difficult solution to code. That's how, no, that's how you could, that's how you could negate, you could put in different scale, uh, Ah, oh, fuck, how would you do it with IS, though? Because the clan mechs, that's what you could do. You could make the different scales of targeting computer manage different, uh, like, weapon, like, penalty loads, like Bill was describing. So if you're if you're running, like, four of your PPCs, and I don't know why you would be, but you are, and you want to, like, negate whatever, like, penalty comes from that, you then have to take, like, the level 7 targeting computer, or if you're only running two and you want to... No, but no. Never mind. I don't like that idea anymore. 
I mean, it is only the direwolf with the problem with the gauss, really. Mm. So, I mean, you could just put, like, minus 10% cooldown on the gauss and, like, plus 10% heat on the energy. Yeah. Something on the on the specific parts, I don't know. I don't know what they I think even if the DPS is low, though, it is kind of a problem that I can one-shot lights just outright. Yeah, it's kind of like the 6 PPC Stalker in a way. It's like, yeah, it wasn't really a problem. Like, no that one ran that awful. as a real build, but it was like such an asshole thing to do, to just nuke somebody in like one shot or two shots. It was just, I don't know, it's like, why? Why allow that in the game even? It's just cheese when you're dying in two shots. I think of a mech game as something where you can make a couple of mistakes. Not a bad one, but man, time to kill has just never been lower. Well, you can die in one shot in Battle Tech Tabletop too, so it's, all I, all I it's a part of the game. Cheese is that. An Atlas can die in one shot in Battle Tech Tabletop. Yeah. A Gauss I mean... rifle to the face kills any mech in Battletech Tabletop. So, Time to Kill is quite a bit higher in MechWar Online than if these fights were going on Tabletop. Granted, I will grant you that, but I just... I don't like the pace of the combat when it is over so fast and when... You know, sniping really is always the way to go, except on just a couple of maps, because you're always gonna die before you get in range. And I just don't like how that has been for the last year. I think that that's kind of on the way out in competitive play in terms of like now that we have map selection. Like the only tournament that we've seen incorporate map selection so far is Merrick and that's because Tony had that built out before the season even start because he knew it was going to happen. So we haven't seen map selection that often. And the IGP. Oh yeah and the IGP one which which we saw a ton of different builds for a lot of different things. I mean the, the build we took against Lords was specifically tailored for that map. We knew exactly what we were doing. We practiced it a hundred times. Stuff like that. Um, we were so scared you'd bring LRMs. <laughs> nah, we weren't, we weren't going for that. We are like, we're going to make this a real fight. Uh, but, and now with SRMs working even better, I think that, or working, I think that you're going to see different play styles and it isn't just going to be all sniping. I mean, it, probably be like LRMs on Alpine and stuff like that and I, just, I I think it will diversify but the problem is that what you see the most of is what's in the pub queue and that's not what's actually going to be competitive eh, my two cents yeah, I think mostly for competitive, if it was clans you'd mostly be seeing Timberwolves um, like sniping, huge long range and then some no is there for the push, because you're going to want something that can kill stuff in a push. Yeah. One, I don't think that we'll see lights at all unless uh, the tonnage is really demanding it. Two things I wanted to talk about were the like how we feel that the actual weapons of the clans stack up to each other. I know Siri is about to say something along the lines of ER Smalls were the only viable laser, um, and something Not like quite. that. But, but their I, damage per heat is pretty broken. I, 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 do, I just want to talk about uh, that and then clan mechs versus IS mechs in that sort of... Uh, uh, well, we've already sort of talked about that. But yeah, so, so clan weapons. Like, what do you guys think uh, in terms of the balance? Like, putting aside IS mechs and stuff like that, purely focusing on clan weapons. Like, for a long time we saw the, the most viable weapons for IS has been the U or like the, the AC5, the PPC, and the gauze rifle. It's basically what everybody brings. AC20s if it's a brawl, never been streaks, and then medium lasers. Like those that's just what you saw. And what have you guys found with clan mechs? What have you guys been seeing? Clan lasers are better. Clan auto cannons are worse because they're not front loaded. Clan SRMs like Guess are about the same because they do a little bit less damage, but there's so much less tonnage. Clan um, pulses are crap. Yeah, clan pulses are shit. Clan machine guns sound awesome. Oh yeah, they do. Uh, the first time I like I ran my stock Timberwolf on PT or the public test server, and I was just like, "What is that noise?" Oh uh, yeah, you guys like that stuff? Oh, it's so good. Yeah, really quick. 
the clans in general look and sound awesome. Like, oh, it's just so much fun. And that new, like, the new HUD has just been... Yeah, yeah, it went over and above what I was expecting. I was expecting another drop of mechs and, like, whoop de doo but no. Everything was really intelligently done. I was pleasantly surprised with this patch. I'm really glad to hear that. I'm sure the art guys are going to love it, too. I love the way the HUD looks. It's yes. unfortunate that right now PPCs and SRMs have the same sound effect when you fire them, which is very strange. Really? And all the auto cannons, yeah, basically sound the same. So, did you notice that? I'd like to see some diversity. LRMs whistle. Yeah, LRMs sound great, but the PPCs and SRMs are the same sound effect when you fire them. Huh? I haven't actually noticed that yet. I don't think I've played any. You know, now them. that I think about it, you're totally right. That's why it sounded so weird. But, dude, like, if you're standing by clan LRMs after they're shot, like, while they're in the air, they actually make a noise. I just noticed that today because I was finally playing, like, without music on or something like that. I was like, oh, they whistle. That's so cool. Um, just Gotta the, give them those whistle tips. My, my favorite thing, and it's, like, super tiny, but the fact that the crosshair is on an angle instead of straight up and down. No idea why. Totally made my day. I was like, oh, that's awesome. It's those little things, eh? It is, man. It's it is. Speaking of which, you should really push for an eject. I just want to see people eject when I kill them. Please. <laughs> yes, I just yes. want to see an LRM fly out of the cockpit straight up. That's it. I'm yep. not asking for an eject sequence. I'm not asking for a cinematic with screen shake or parachutes. Fuck that. Just let me see them fly out. Except if they get a headshot. Yeah. And then I want to see an explosion of blood. Just like a little, like right out of the cockpit. How awesome would that be? <laughs> That'd be pretty hilarious. What if you're in a cave or something? The LRM hit the roof and. Oh, that'd be great, spot. dude. That would be yeah. <laughs> that would just be hilarious under HPG. What an inglorious death. I, I like the eject idea. Not sure about the the whole blood explosion. Cool yeah, no, that that's totally it. secondary. I just want to see cool the, as that would be. the eject that might hurt. That might hurt our hopes for, you know, expanding into countries which have uh, different, you know, video game violence expectations. Australia! Come on, yeah. Yeah. Let's, just, let's be fair. Here. Let's be fair. It's Australia. Australia is the problem when it comes to video game ratings. Um, well, you know, each has different standards, and some of them, it, we stand in a pretty good position because we don't have, you know, direct human violence, and I'd like to avoid that. <laughs> I can understand that. Stevie brings up a good point uh, in chat. Uh, he's surprised that clans don't have a different Betty voice. Oh. Yeah, actually, Nico, did you... back in the Star League. Nico, did you see that one post by that guy that showed if you just add, like, some reverb effect or whatever, it sounds way more mechanical and different? And it sounded like the Mech Warrior 2 voice. Because if you, I, I heard that one. That was pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna get that one by. Is, I, I like that idea. Is awesome. Wispy, are you are you serious about that? Is it actually was it actually like lore wise all recorded before? Oh god, I don't I don't know. Oh okay. Like, no, I was just throwing that out there. I didn't know if you were like dropping some crazy lore bomb on us that was like, oh yeah, the the in game like all mechs use the same in game UI that was recorded and like the voice prompts were recorded way before the clans left the inner sphere. Like I don't know what you guys are talking about. This is very common knowledge, and I was gonna be like, I no idea. <laughs> oh, I've only read a few books, like first few. <laughs> No, I, I like that idea. And uh, speaking of the Betty voiceovers, there was also a poll we recently put up of just, you know, small little ideas of things that we can grab up along the way to community warfare. And one of the options, amongst many others, is uh, more Betty voiceovers. Yeah, the, the kill one would be fun. I like that idea. I was said nothing about ejection was on that list. Should add it. I, I saw that when I was on my phone, so I didn't actually read the whole list. We'll, we'll probably keep doing those uh, every once in a while. Uh, we'll see how this one first one turns out, but if, if it's really successful and uh, you know we can pump those ideas out as quickly as possible, then we'll move on to the next poll. Sweet. That's great to hear because, man, some of those things I've wanted for so long. It's like I don't care about 
really even community warfare compared to little things like color coded death messages and crap like that. And that just makes it for me. 70, 78.5% of the community are just like, well, fuck you, homeless bell. We want community warfare. They can have oh. it. Just to get this quick note in here, because I know it's been bugging a couple people, but Betty is sometimes wrong. Tells you, like, your left torso has been destroyed when it's been your right. Really? I've and never had that happen. it is that, not... That, I, I think that's a hit detection related issue. Hmm. Or if I've had that happen, I've because, never noticed uh, it. Because Betty, Betty is uh, triggered client side, right? That's weird. <laughs> Huh. Like, I literally your torso sense. getting blown off, and the other one is still fine, so... It might be that I just tune her out. So yeah, I... whenever I get anything destroyed, I just stop listening, because she's just sitting there for, like, the next three minutes telling me about all the shit I lost. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm in bad shape, lady. I get it. Did you know? Your mech is totally fucked. It's in the start of the game, when you have the end, all I hear is missile incoming. Speaking of which, can we get an, a different LRM incoming sound, like the classic MechWarrior 2 get the hell out of here sound? I've never heard no, of it. Oh, oh seriously, hang on, let me find this. Oh, this is a MechWarrior 4. Wasn't it like a klaxon kind of thing? I've actually got this on my YouTube, so hang That's on. That's awesome. Would it be pretty easy to get a target destroyed message in there? I saw it was on the list, but can't you take like the the target from new target acquired that she says and then the like right arm destroy the destroyed from that and put target destroyed in the game the, the, there's two things to that one is that it's kind of unfair to the artist you know we'd rather preserve you know her artistic integrity and let her record the new lines as they're supposed to be i mean there are tools that exist for you know splicing together uh different uh, words into a full speech, but those are recorded specifically for that purpose as well. I linked the sound in uh, Twitch chat. I do kind of like that sound, that's fun. I do like the, the missiles. I mean, it's down. really annoying. I Maybe not something that abrasive, because it really was bad when you kept hearing that over and over, but something that's more than this sooth soothing missile incoming, like, that doesn't that doesn't mean much. I don't even hear that half the time. It does so make me find that soothing. Does make me real. I, I introduced a friend to the game a little while ago, and he was trying to like listen to everything in his cockpit. And I was like, "You can't do that, man. You can't pay attention to this stuff. You gotta, you gotta play the game." It's like, but it's tell. I was like, "It's not telling you anything. Just, just keep playing." You got missiles coming at you. Just, just keep going. I kind of like the Mech Warrior Four like set of triple beeps for the missiles incoming. Yeah, that was actually good, too. I just liked it more than the, don't worry about it, missiles are coming. Like, somebody, it's just so... Somebody mentioned that the, the and this is totally off topic, the radar deprivation makes a noise when it cuts off your lock. Is that true? Really, really faint. Okay. But it is actually there. That's cool. I like Speaking that. of radar deprivation... Yeah, that's actually something we should talk about because it came out totally the OP. So broke. Quite nice. What? <laughs> what was that slight head, Bob Yeager? You're like, uh, I mean, it's cool. It's in. I've been pretty tired of advanced target decay on LRM boats ever since the projectile speed of the missiles went up. You know, something's like 400 meters away. It sees you. You are going to get hit by the LRMs, no matter how long you've been in cover. You, it could see you for a split second. It fires. You're getting hit. So that's super annoying. So I've been having a good time not getting shot by LRMs a lot. But sure, it directly counters that module. But I mean, you think it should not... directly counter it in a more passive way, like it just you go back to the neutral lock-on time instead of instant deprivation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because the the like leaving that the decay should uh, have a purpose. Didn't just I, I didn't like the decay in the first place. That I wish target would just go away when you got out of line of sight without the module. And if somebody was going to spot you, they can spot you for their teammates. But I'm I'm personally fine with the way that target decay or that the target deprivation is working because that's the way I just wish locking would be anyways in the game. 
I'm kind of on it's the same too, page as the aggro here. It's too generous, with, especially with advanced target decay. The amount of time you get to keep a target is way too generous. I suppose that makes sense. Even, even for learn boats? Or too much? Yeah, yeah screw boats. learn boats. They, if they want to spot something, they can either use their Artemis and their tags and spot it themselves, watch the missiles the whole way in, or they can have a, a mech spot for them. But it's it's super generous to be shot by at 400, 500 meters by an LRM boat that sees you for a split second, fires its weapons, and then it can just, you know, it goes back on the hill, you go by and it'll take cover and you still get hit. Some yeah. light mechs do their spotting by just sitting out there in the open. That's actually the wrong way to do it. You just put target decay on, you get like a rock, you pop up every three seconds and get a split right. second lock. And yep. Even easier if you have jump jets. You You see your enemy, you fire your missiles. You let your missiles go for a while, then you jump back up and reacquire your target right before they're going to hit and drop back down into cover and you hit. It's pretty silly. Where and, and I mean, this... Think... Go ahead. This goes back to the whole, like, Lerms, their function, I feel, is broken with how indirect fire is implemented. But it's a rant I've done before, I think. All right. sure I have. took my Lerm fight to the forums. It went badly. Um, just really quick, it's Nico, Nico has once again stayed behind past his bedtime, and I want to let him go because I he's been so nice to come and hang out with us. So, Nico, man, give your shoutouts. Thanks, man. I, I really appreciate being here. Yeah, it's good to have you. It's and good to hear what you guys have to say because uh, I know you guys are really on the edge with the competitive community. Well, hey, we, I think all of us are really just happy to have you here listening, hanging out with us. Everything has been, like, so great in the last month. <laughs> like, it's just been oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, you're doing well, a great job, Nico. Thanks for coming by. Um, give everybody in the office a high five. You guys nailed this one. I don't say that well, often, but good job. I'll be, where he's I'll in be able Montreal. To in, in ten more days, ten more days, I'll be able to give them all a high five for you. There you go. So have a good night, everybody. And I'll catch up on the rest of the S episode on YouTube tomorrow. Yeah, you night, will. Nico. Thanks for coming on, man. Great to have you. See you, man. Ciao. Okay, I'm going to mess with you over really quick. Keep, keep chatting. I was just going to ask, um, where does everybody even want to see modules end up at? Because it's kind of this awkward place where it's like, consumables are clearly the things to take. Uh, and they have to be, or no one would buy them every time. But that sort of leaves most of these other modules in the dust. I mean, obviously with the exception of the one we were just discussing. But how powerful do you think these should be? Do you think they should, like, split them up, or what? Yeah, they should definitely be split up. They've been talking about it for a long time, and I'm very surprised it's not actually been implemented yet. But mechs were supposed to have, you know... Uh, consumable modules and then the type of modules they're like target modules i don't know target info gathering advanced sensor range etc and there's supposed to be different types of modules and then by whatever mech it was you're supposed to get a certain number of each modules so it is yeah it would definitely be better if let's just take the timberwolf for example with master you can take uh three modules if it was required to be one targeting module so that's like target decay target info sensor range and then you can take like one consumable and then maybe the master module would be whatever you want so you can take a second consumable things like that just so you mechs can't take cool shot and two strikes unless it was like something really specialized like the jenner k or raven 3l or something well you mean radar deprivation a cool shot and a strike yeah sure but whatever <laughs> it they, it should have been in by now i would have thought that the different types of modules and restrictions based on that been in. Yeah, I thought this was coming quite a while ago too. I just wanted to see if everybody else was on the same page. Yep, I just want my auto refill on consumables. It's yes. top voted right now on that it's list. It's allegedly coming. No, I, it better be. <laughs> I've, I've been waiting for that for so long. Seven buttons or whatever to put on two modules is just crazy. Yeah. And you I scroll. honestly probably wouldn't use it though, just because sometimes I don't want to spend money on consumables. Like sometimes I'd rather not use Air Arty. Well, 
I'll just leave them. Well, I guess that's right. You would equip other modules because there was one cool shot that I had in my Highlander 733C for two and a half months. <laughs> it just sat there. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. I mean, the main reason that I don't get to use mine is uh, all the times the mechs are grouped up. Somebody's already placed one uh, till the end where you're like, well, I could arty this one guy, but probably shouldn't. Uh, we have, unless you guys know Atkinson, he has a tradition of always getting his air already stolen from him in every single game we play, to the point where he just doesn't try to use them anymore, and he just saves them till the end of the game. So if you're in the end of a game with him, and he's about, and like, you're like, oh man, wish we had some airstrikes, he always has them, because somehow we steal them from him throughout the entire game. It's pretty funny. In um, that game that we had on Caustic, I still had mine at the end of it. Did you really? Yeah, I didn't use them at all. I had no chance to until there was, like, no mechs to use them on. <laughs> yeah, I sp well, I mean, we got really close really fast, and then you run the risk of killing your teammates. Oh, I don't mind about that. Yeah. <laughs> I That's the Lord's just, tradition. I, I always just, uh, you just gotta wait for your friends to get legged, and then say, I love you like a brother, and drop an air on them. No big deal. It's perfect. Yeah. In the first match, I mean, Heim got caught by some lights. He could have run away, but Addy decided to just drop an Addy on him. <laughs> <laughs> got him killed and legged. Like. Making making kill denying a thing. Like if you if you're willing to take the penalty to like TK your opponent, and the the the, the ten thousand XP and stuff like that, it shouldn't count as a kill for your opponent in something like skirmish. So just like, you get somebody lagged and you run away and you're like, PUT HIM DOWN QUICK BEFORE THE LIGHTS GET HIM! That would be an interesting competitive strategy. You like, get up three kills and then immediately just start killing your own guys so they can't get any more kills. Earlier <laughs> in the game it was like that. Team kills didn't count towards the, the kills. So Ooh. if you had a disconnect or whatever, you could kill them before the enemy got to them and then you wouldn't count. Definitely used to do that for disconnects. I'd but... like that as a setting in private lobbies. Just like, I mean, it doesn't have to be that way in public games, but that would be a fun competitive setting. Just like TKs don't count as enemy kills. Playing Tourmaline, skirmish, get up a kill, team kill everybody except the spider, put a spider inside the dropship over in the northwest <laughs> that nobody can shoot into. Or Is that really a thing? Unless they have a spider yeah. or a locust? That there is this dropship that only a locust or a spider or a commando can get into. Huh. I was not aware of Speaking this. of, I should probably file a support ticket about that. Because it's kind of stupid. Um, yeah, I just think I'm sure that'll be high on their priority list, just like the pillars on HPG. Just think of the demise that you could do, though. All the mercy killings. That'd be amazing. Yeah. You guys instantly think of ways to exploit it, and I probably should too, but I was just thinking about it in terms of, like, fun situations where actually killing your teammate when they get legged is a mercy killing. Oh, looks like looks like the Jenner's been legged. Time to put Siri down. He's no use anymore. It's okay, you guys put me down all the fucking time. <laughs> okay, It crushes um, my spirit sometimes. What else do we need to talk about with clans? Do Obsolete we? weapons. The AC2. It makes me so sad. Why? Yeah. Why do they keep doing it? I, if one if one Ultra was going to not have a burst mechanic, it should be the AC2. I don't know why the AC2 is burst, to be completely honest. I'm told that the reason that the AC2 has been nerfed over and over recently is because at lower elos people don't know how to shield and so they just kind of stand in the open and stare directly back at the thing that's you know ac2 dpsing it and they they do die quickly because they're not shielding because they're hardly moving so it's a serious problem at lower elos is what i've been told and i had never it's not at all that. at the levels we play at so the reason it's been nerfed is so people aren't just decimating other teams with ac2s I mean, that's the, as silly as that sounds to us, it's it's a serious problem at lower yeah. levels. Okay, yeah, at that... mid levels, people are decimating people with LRMs. Like, there's always a weapon that's going to be dominating at a certain tier, but it's Jesus. like if they had brought mass lasers against people, then twist, it would be the same thing. 
cheese is cheese, no matter where you are. I it's mean, cheese because I... it's effective. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I understand what you're saying. I had never thought about that though. I but tried to get down there far that... enough, but I didn't see it. But I would believe it. I just wish they'd tell us that kind of thing. Like, this is not just out of the blue. We're doing this because this is a balance problem somewhere. You don't, you don't want to insult your player base, though. You don't want to be like, we're nerfing the AC2 because... You don't have to say because of bads. You just say cause because it are... is overperforming based on our statistics. Like, they have all those numbers there, and it's like... Who is anyone to say no? You're full of shit. It's like well, sorry, we're looking at our numbers. But so, but, but no, but like that's things that that, that has been done. The forums. That like people do that all the time, even when there are numbers quoted. They're like those numbers are wrong. Like if there had just been in patch notes, like eight, uh, like you know, reasons for AC2 nerf, uh, numerical evidence supporting imbalance. You'd have been like bullshit. Nobody uses AC2s. Like blah blah blah. Like you wouldn't stop to be like, well, maybe different ELO groups are having problems with AC2s. But that just wouldn't be like your instant train of thought. So I don't think explaining it would help anymore. But I, I mean, I'm I'm glad that we have found it out. See, the thing is, I don't feel that's... Like, if you have an ELO system, I don't feel it's a problem, because if somebody... There's always going to be that dominant strategy, and when people use it, then they're going to rise up, and if they hit a point where it no longer works, then they have to relearn something else, and so if people are abusing it, they're out of that anyways. And so I don't I don't see that as a valid reason for the nerf. Six pool to when diamond. You move, work you if you don't there. move, you die so fast. Yeah, yeah like it's like you said, six pool to diamond. Nobody thinks that's a serious issue. Oh, that's totally a thing. You can you can six pool your way to like masters and then actually like learn how to play from there. People do it. But that or it's the wrong game. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, Jaeger. I don't know. Isn't there some level in Star? I only played StarCraft two for a brief time right at the beginning when it came out. But is that seriously a thing that can happen? A lot, of people, a lot of people. A lot of people. Isn't that some level you learn how to avoid losing to a six pool? Yeah. Right, until Masters is where people know how. Basically, that's it. Yeah. That's, it? that's uh, where people like start to be uh, expecting it every single game and like preparing for it. So you can't just like go into every game six pooling and people are like, there's no way I'll get six pool. Although it, it works in reverse too, because you expect everybody in Bronze League to six pool, so it's like a it's a curve. So like nobody, you, you don't expect it in the bottom of the curve, but at either end, you're like, oh, there's gonna be six pools all the time. Yeah, my point is, it's not actually a problem and not something they're balancing around, because it's just at the lower levels. It's a different dominant meta, sure, but the offenders automatically. The offenders automatically move out of it, eventually. Yeah. It's just a, a silly point that I bring up to illustrate that. Um, I would personally like to see ultras use like a, the number of shells be based on the damage, not on just like the ultra. So like the twenty shoots five shells at four apiece. But the ten shoots four shells at two point five apiece, like it just doesn't make sense to me. The what is the five? Does the five shoot three? Yes. Yep. I don't like that. Like it. Uh, I don't know. I think it works okay. To be fair, that actually confuses me. Is the standard AC tens are categorically worse than the ultras? Are there even... I don't think... The clans don't actually have a... a well, they do yet. right now because that's, that's how filler, they though. did the ammo switching. But even when they do that, like, who the hell's gonna take an LBX over an Ultra? I have a very hard time believing. Have you used an LBX-20 yet? Because they're awesome. I mean, they're not good, but they're awesome. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm all about the shotgun. I've run as much shotgun as I could, LBX-60, but I still don't think it's very good. Yeah. Okay, so... Sir, you mentioned it earlier, something about laser durations, and just numerically that the small laser is more advantageous than the rest of them. Do you think that just the duration is too long? The only difference between a IS 
medium laser and a clan small is the 90 meters of range in exchange for half the heat on the smalls. Literally half. It's two heat compared to an IS mediums four. Keep in mind that IS mediums were nerfed from their tabletop values because they were overperforming with their other parameters. And the small is no different, I feel. It is two and a half damage per heat, and no other laser even gets close to that. Most of them are at like half that. that. Yeah, and then you can fit 12 of them on one mech. Yeah, and that. Yeah. So, uh, so, I mean, like, ER smalls, ultras, LBXs, are, I feel, are fine. Pulses need a lot of love because they have, like, 0.2 second, I think. Dude, Shorter pulses, duration than regulars, and that's nothing. Yeah, I mean, like, if you look at the IS ones, in order to get them into, like, semi-viable in restricted loadouts, you have to drop them down, like, 0.6 to the regular's 0.1. I still think that pulse lasers should work like machine guns and just generate constant heat as you shoot them. And then the other standout we've already discussed being the Gauss rifle, especially... Well, in just walking else. over that one. Not even gonna talk about it. No. Let's let's talk about this cooldown on Streak SRM six is quick. I want to get you guys' thoughts. Uh, longest cooldown in the, the game. Cool I hear. Is fine. I, hear I think the, the cooldown cool is fine. In the game. Is that correct? Seven seconds. Yes, yeah, that makes it actual risk. Like you know, you're actually trading something to take it. Then just because the long cooldown, like I mean, it costs like no tonnage anyway. But it's not something that you can really use against a heavy assault because they'll DPS you down, and so yeah. it is just wasted DPS. It doesn't I, really stop lights doing hit and runs because you you hit them once and they run away and they're like, oh shit, I've I've lost all of my armor and by the time I come back, he can fire again anyway. Um, we've had some interesting. It does help in finishing them off though. With adders, just to see like if they were worth anything, you can fit four streak sixes on an adder. And in a 1v1 fight with a Jenner, the Jenner just can't win unless it runs away and like tries to kite it in that sweet spot. But I think we did 12, 12 games like one on one like that, and the Jenner never won. And the f reason that's so is because streaks for clans have an absolutely obscene 360 meter range. I don't understand why it's a thing. Yeah. Yes, clans. Really? Oh wow. 360 meters. It's ridiculous. That it's, is it's a, it's a It's a huge amount of damage that they're putting out on, on light mechs. And at that range, like that's beyond the range of, well, that's barely like effective medium laser, really. It's not really yeah. fire much beyond that ever. Like, the, it needs to be dropped. Like, 270. Hell, I drop it to like 230, 250, just so that lights have room to play. Yeah, somewhere around SRM range sounds about right. That really is way too long. I mean, the long cooldown, I think, is fine enough because, you know, it's hard to balance streak sixes. It's like once you fire them off, like whatever light is in front of them is, is really going to get hurt if you're running three or four of those things. But I don't know. I like them more as a deterrent where they just sit there. They don't do much DPS. They spread their damage, but they can really fuck up a light if they get close. Yeah, they zone out lights from actually going in and that zone is limited by their range and right now 360 is too high I... you, you literally can't approach uh, the whole group because they could walk over uh, especially if it's on like a timber wolf or something i mean i'm not saying you should load streaks on your timber wolf but if you happen to have one and it has streaks on it you can just walk over to any light that comes within like a 500 meter range and just completely wreck them I mean, we haven't. I, I think we haven't seen it be an issue because everybody is playing clan max and it's like big clan max. If you look at the percentages of what's in the queue, lights are. Earlier today, it was at like 15%. It's at 20% right now. And a lot of those are kit foxes and adders, which are shit, anyways. 
But if it went back to, oh, now it's down to 13%. But if it went back to a more reasonable amount, it was 333, and you were having like actual IS lights being forced to be used because you wouldn't take fucking clan lights anymore once people wise up and are like over the shininess of the new things, then Streak Hunter uh, Storm Crows running like five Streak Sixes. G fucking G to the lights. Yeah, but this is just my point in playing. What can what can that do to any mech that isn't a light? Like well, the amount of time it's, it's gonna take. As, it's the same yeah, thing as a five street Kintaro. Why would you bring that before? It was it was still useful though. In doing it's a hard counter to lights, and if you're forcing three people into light mechs in a game, and there are there people. There's there's one person behind every uh, every mech. And saying, "All right, so any mech for a bit, like, you know, a tiny amount of tonnage can completely counter you, so that you can't go near it." How much? Yeah, not to mention in in competition. In competition, I think it's three tons, was it? Well, anyways, in uh, competition, we play the light decks in almost every you know match we have, and in those light decks, a stormcrow or whatever with four SRM streak SRM sixes will shut down like half the enemy team. Yeah, it's pretty damn dangerous. Well, so so that's really our future of drop decks. How many? So let's see, seven seconds cooldown, depending on the scatter. How many streak? How many sixes did you say you could fit in a stormcrow? Five. 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 Or a summoner. So you you're maybe gonna kill like that. That volley will kill light mech, maybe. I've legged. With yeah. one volley, right? That's or... that's like an entire like two lances of light mechs like that we have now. They can only shoot two streak twos, shooting mm -hmm. you know. No, no, no. I I understand. I'm just I'm just doing the math. Savage. And <laughs> I I yeah, wonder. I just wonder how miss. that would stack up against things like AC20 Shadowhawks against that comp. Like your lights would get wrecked, oh. but I wonder how long it would take you to wreck the Ryokens in return. Well, you wouldn't it's do it still in two mass. Damage per missile. You wouldn't yeah, do it in mass. Like you bring one or two specialists just to clear the field. Yeah. You're trading they one 55 tonner for all their lights. I... That just shuts down all of their lights. The, the lights just how fast? How fast killed. does uh, a K2 go down? Think about your comp games. Like I, I'm not saying that it's not a valid threat and that it's totally more effective than a K2, but like think about how fast a K2 goes down. That is 40 pinpoint damage on a light mech which is dangerous and granted it doesn't hit every shot every time but good pilots are pretty dangerous and those That's, go down yeah but really fast because everybody sees it and everybody focuses it down and i'm saying that unless you bring them en masse if you only bring one or two it's going to be the same thing they're going to go down really quick because everybody's going to be like well they brought two streak six ryokens kill them yeah, but that, it's sure they may die, going but if you can look at a light mech and it disappears, then you've done a pretty good job. You do that two or three times before you die, looking good. Yeah, I, and yeah, you, took, you took the pressure off the rest of your team, which may have AC-20s and your light mechs and stuff, so they're getting work in at the same time. Yeah, and that's where I think we run into you, problems. you can't with... miss at all. Like, with the AC-20s, you can juke that. Even if they're really good pilots, if you know how they're going to fire, you can move at the right times. But with the streaks, yeah. uh, every single time it's going to kill you. Oh, I, I I agree that it is definitely a problem. I just don't. I I want to see it tested before I think that it's like game endingly a problem. Yeah, but I mean, it really does hurt them because it's like their effective HP. Like half of a light's effective HP is just maneuverability, and so when you yeah. take that away from them, it really really hurts. It's like a big part of me wants some sort of alpha penalty on streaks as well, I where it's like you can't old... fire more than two or three streak sixes at once because otherwise you're not giving light pilots a fucking chance. They turn the wrong corner, they're dead. It's over. How many of you guys were around matter for you... the old streak mechanic? Like way back. Where they only home CT? No, 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 no. Uh, well, where they where only... They have like incredible perfect turning and you could actually outmaneuver them if you yeah. position correctly. Yeah, I where they that, that was yeah, amazing. They, they only hit if you fired them like they were gonna hit. So like you fired yeah. them 
So if you're if you're looking at a target and it was running like at you or close to you, they would hit. But if it was like strafing across in front of you and you locked on and you didn't like lead it a little bit, there was a possibility that they would just veer off and miss it. And they would like try and come back. And the problem that they ran into that was the like the spinning missile bug where it would just like sit in the air and spin around in a circle and then you'd run through it later and take two damage and be like, What the fuck is this? But I, yeah, I, but that was much better because then there was, I mean, it was still much easier to hit with them, but there was a skill involved in hitting with them, and you you could actually use skill to get out the way. Whereas now it's just hundred percent. I I would. Much I, I, tempted I to say that I would agreeing. like to see something like that with clans, and maybe not with IS Max, just because. The streaks for IS is only come in twos, but I mean, eventually we're gonna get streak sixes for IS for in years or whatever. So I don't know, but I I liked that mechanic and having it back would be great. When do we get streak sixes and UI twenties for it. IS? Anyways, hopefully never. I really wish they would have gone with the UI mechanic that you suggested, Siri. I think the. The clip is just so much better than the random double tap, because especially with IS, it's just going to be super broken when they try to scale that up. Just for people who don't know, that was the suggestion to have, say, like five shots to a clip, and you had like a faster fire rate within the clip, but then when the clip was out, you had to spend like 15 to 20 seconds reloading it. Uh, IS is... Uh... 3058 for streak sixes. Still, hopefully, fucking never. <laughs> Especially if the UAC 20s are single shot. I, I, I'm honestly like, but here's the thing: I don't want to see like mixed game matches. I want to see clan versus IS stuff because I feel like mixed game matches are just gonna see very specific mechs used in very specific ways, and that's all you're gonna see. I don't think you'll see any divergence from the current. Uh, like meta trend, I think that if you see like type uh, like clan versus IS games, it'll be different. That's just me though. Supposedly for community warfare, that's exactly what we're gonna get. Yeah. I'm not sure clans are entirely balanced enough for that to work out quite yet. Not I, right now. I agree, but I think that they're. It's it's they're, they're closer than within reason. Like, yeah, for sure. It's way closer than I think most people thought it was going to be. The Ultra Twenty availability is thirty sixty for IS. So, ten years if they don't fast forward the timeline. You know they're going to fast forward it after the Battle of Tiki Eat or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Which is okay. I I want a blood asp in my lifetime. Damn straight. <laughs> okay, uh, is there anything else we have to talk about clans? I mean, we could go on all night talking about this, but in terms of like balance issues and stuff that we think is important. Quirks? Greatest Quirks are ever. awesome, and I hope they Make do that to IS mechs, because man, some of those IS mechs need some help, and some of the things they were doing there are just like really nice. I think if they made Quirks more dramatic, it would be okay. Definitely. I mean, I think we're all on the same page. That would be a good thing. Yep. Yeah, so one of the ways that you can give Max advantages that don't have jump jets as well. That's true. You could even make like speed by speed or like uh, mech by mech speed increases. So you could make mechs without jump jets faster than mechs with jump jets or something like just tiny. Like that's percent. something I almost thought about was like, what if jump jets like had that. an associated penalty, like they decrease your max speed by 2% of jump jet, or whatever the hell. Wispsy, did you just say hill climb? Like, mechs yeah, with I... jump jets get decreased hill climb value, so you have to be using your jump jets to get up hills, but mechs without them can yeah, climb hills like faster? That. That'd be fun. That would be like a good that. idea. I'd rather see mechs without jets get buffed than mechs with jump jets get nerfed, so... I agree. I'd rather the groundbound mechs have better turning rates and acceleration, deceleration, and stuff. That makes sense. Oh, okay. I am getting tired, as I'm sure most of you are. I'm keeping you up late, as always, because I showed up late. Uh, is there any last points we want to hit before we close it out for the night? 
I got a one on. Uh, I kind of want to ask everybody if they had to do one change, no matter how drastic, to fix clan balance, what would it be? Start with Bill. Mine would be mine would be to increase the cooldown on PPCs by two seconds. Okay. Whoopsie, Bill. Either you have it. I would. I did too. I'm I'm also a little biased though. I think they need to um, buff light speed. 130 kph. 100 percent biased. If it's just like what a flat 20 percent speed quirk. Yeah, like, that, that would be fine. You, they don't even need the extra um, like the turning that would usually come with such speed, in my opinion. They just need to be able to go fast enough that they can somewhat avoid shots. <laughs> King K just posted a picture of me with hair and chat. Yeah, he put that up earlier. You missed it. Oh, I missed it. That's sexy right there. <laughs> That's so good. The you killer just need to part. Use that instead of your webcam. That actually looks a little bit like me when I didn't have hair, although I never had a mustache. Oh, that's actually my new favorite thing. That's gonna go up as my Twitter picture. Okay, uh... Sorry about that. Keep going. <laughs> I think Bill's up next. Oh, yep. uh... Like I said before, I think they just need to tie their alpha scale all together in some sensible way instead of just arbitrarily linking things and chasing the cheese around. What about you, I mean, it needs balance adjustments like ERs, but... Remove TAC S from the game, Timberwolf. Um... Just straight up, do it. <laughs> Jaeger is yeah. sucks. Uh... I would like to see... Uh, man, I don't know. I, I want to see laser duration messed with. I want to see all lasers put in a viable place. I think that's a pretty important thing. I don't know how, though. Alright. Um, okay. I think that's it for tonight, then. Great. Just making sure I was like running through all the topics in my head. Uh, shout outs to close out the show. Uh, Bill. Uh, Pixel Baron, because this patch was shit and I'm shit. What? <laughs> Some angry RMWO poster. I asked how they thought the clan patch was, and he said, It's shit. You're shit. <laughs> I almost gave him gold. <laughs> you should have. Oh um, yeah. Shout out be to I guess I'll do a shout out to PGI for making things much more balanced than I expected them to be and probably making Mecha Online the most balanced between clan and inner sphere that anything in Battletech has ever been. That's totally broken in tabletop, totally broken in all the other MechWarrior online or other MechWarrior video games, and this is the best we've seen. Mostly for making the clan Ultra Auto Cannon twenty not OP, because I was terrified that that would be a game-ending weapon, like it is in most of the other MechWarrior titles. Yeah, Amen. I, I that was a good change. Alright, let's see. Yeah, I'll probably go with the uh, the art team. They all, uh, almost always perform. They're a real credit. I agree. Alright, Mr. Syriothrax. I'm a whale, bitch. <laughs> Trivert, no. Trivert would be proud. Um, the, the amount of clans on the field proves the existence of whales. Oh, Go lol. whales. Yeah, I get it now. I thought you were making a dire wolf joke, but yeah. No, it was, it was two layers. Uh, jokeception. Okay, that means it's me. Uh, first and foremost, my shout-out goes to Kincaid for that glorious render of me with hair. Uh, I can't actually grow my hair out because I'm bald as shit at 21. So, sorry. You'll never see the bald spot. Uh, a huge shout-out goes to, to PGI. Uh, this last month for me has been just like awesome in the game. Communication has been great. I've been, we've all been talking to people and seeing changes made. 
stuff like that. Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, thank you for coming to watch tonight. We had good viewership, etc. All the guests have been Wait. great. What? I have one more shout out. Okay. I'm being coerced, but my shout out is to Wispsy for falling asleep during the SWK game. Did that really happen? Really? <laughs> Apparently, I'm not allowed to let you live that down. Oh yeah, if you if you ever run into try, make fun of him for getting headshot against Death Metal Band. That's like top tier important. Um, oh fuck, where was I? Oh yeah, shout out to uh, shout out to all the guests, shout out to all the viewers. It's been a blast as always. Uh, follow me on Twitter and YouTube. The buttons are below the stream, etc. Make sure you know everything that's up to date. Uh, I'm trying to get something set up. I'm gonna do a marathon stream at some point to raise money to then host a show match. So we would I'd do a marathon stream, raise money, and then whatever money raised during the stream would go into a pool, and then we'd put up a vote, and we would vote on what teams we want to see play. Uh, and then based on that, we'd have a best of seven, best of five show match or something like that, and then award a team some money to pay for t-shirts or TS bills or something like that. So. That's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Other than that, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal.